everyone, it's Claire here and today I'm going to do a video about reusables that are not cloth pads. So reusable wipes, unpapered towel, facial rounds, um, because the one thing I've noticed a lot is that often people are asking about unpapered towel and things as if it's some mystical thing. And then they say, oh, I can't afford to buy them because they can be quite expensive. But I think people don't realize how easy it is to make your own reusable cloth products for the home. It's actually way, way easier than making cloth pads. So if you are a complete novice beginner um, and you've like just got a sewing machine, this is a great place to start. You can also hand sew them as it's just a simple like straight stitching standard stitch. So they're pretty easy and you can do it pretty cheaply and cost effectively as well and even completely upcycled. So let's start by taking a look. I'm going to start with facial rounds. So currently you might be using cotton wool balls, cotton pads. You might be using the cotton pads that have the exfoliator on the other side. And all of these things are a one-time use. You use them and then they go into the bin. Well, it's a lot handier just to have them there all the time. You don't have to remember to get them at the supermarket. You can wash them and you can customize them to what products you're using and what effect you want to get basically. So I've got two really, really basic ones here that I literally whipped up a second ago just to show how easy it is. But you can make them a bit more, what's the word? Mm, finished if you want. But literally, if you have no experience, this is just how simple it is. So I have got two here. They're both slightly different. They've both got the patterned flannel on this side and then on the opposite side they have got this one's got white plain flannel and this one has got bamboo terry so these are great with the completely flannel ones so two layers of flannel if you want to remove your eye makeup if you use toner if you're using a cream cleanser that does not um, you know like a lotion cleanser that does not need any water then these are absolutely brilliant for that. Then if you use a balm cleanser, which are all the thing at the moment, I actually use a balm cleanser. It's really fabulous, especially if you have reactive or dry skin. Um, but it takes a little bit more effort to get it off. Then terry toweling is a great choice of backer because it just has that it's still really, really soft, but just has that tiny little bit of abrasiveness enough to get off everything you want to get off. Also, if you are a really heavy makeup wearer, then Terry is awesome. The other great thing about these pads is the fact like this Terry one, for example, I have got flannel on the other side. So I can use this to get off all the majority of my cleanser, all the majority of my makeup. Then I can run it under the tap. And just go over with the soft pretty flannel side just to make sure all traces are removed then you chuck them in the wash now these are the simplest version that i could think of for the absolute beginner and i have not even used or created a pattern for this i've literally taken my husband's favorite cup Let's hope he does not see this video. Shh, don't tell him. This did not happen. This will be in the dishwasher and back in the cupboard before he gets home from work, I can assure you. Now, a mug is actually the perfect size for a facial round. So all I've done is turned it upside down on the fabric, drawn around it in fabric pen and cut out the layers. Hey presto, no effort whatsoever. You can also use a mug to obviously make your pattern because if you take some paper, you could draw around your mug, cut it out, and you've got a permanent pattern and don't have to steal your husband's mugs. So we'll put that over here and pretend that didn't happen. Now, if you, um, what I've done sewing wise is faux surged them with the zigzag stitch 
on my um, sewing machine because it's really easy, it's really quick. It holds up really well. Um, they wash great. But if you want to have a neater look, then take your mug and draw your pattern on paper or on your fabric and then leave a quarter of an inch all the way around the edge seam allowance uh, because you can top, top, turn and top stitch them. So basically you will have your pattern and then leave extra around here and you will put sides facing, good sides facing. So whatever you want on the outside, if you've got a pattern like this, this will face on the inside, just like if making a cloth pad, same with your base. So the two outside sides should be together. Bits of terry all over me, um, like so. Then once you've done that, you will literally sew around, leaving a gap on one side to turn through the fabric then flatten it out, iron it, push in the extra bits of material so you've got a nice neat circle and then you can iron and top stitch and you will have a really neat edge. You don't have to take those extra steps, no one's going to really see these except you and functionally wise they'll last up just as good but if you really want to have a like finished product then you can turn and top stitch them really easily. Another thing you can do with these is actually put muslin on one side. If you buy um, some muslin, it's pretty cheap. You can literally get it a couple of pounds. Um, I even saw some in the pound store once. It is cotton and take two layers of it and put that on the underside of a piece of flannel or a piece of cotton, whatever you want to use as your front facing side. And you have made yourself an exfoliating pad which is great if you're sensitive skin and you can't use those grain exfoliators or if you just want to do a gentle exfoliation every day when you take off your cleanser so that is a tip there so that's those done next is cloth wipes now cloth wipes have so many uses you can replace so many um throwaway products with some cloth wipes so tissues um, for blowing your nose you can use cloth wipes to freshen up during your period if you are a cup user and you're worried you're not going to be able to get near water or a sink you can have cloth wipes which you can wet at home pop in a ziploc bag and then you have a nice damp cloth wipe to clean up with clean your cup or whatever while you're out and about. They can be used to replace um, baby wipes. So for your baby's bottom, not only your baby's bottom, if you have young kids and you're going on picnics or out for the day, you can damp them down before, pop them in a Ziploc bag, and then the kids can wipe their hands, faces, anything else that gets grubby while you're out and about. Um, you can use them to replace toilet paper, which you may heard heard here referred to as like um unpapered toilet roll if you like um or unpapered toilet wipes now you can use them for number one and number two if you want you can use them for just if you are going for a wee it's completely what suits you and your household some people are grossed out by the idea of replacing their toilet paper other people are all for it so it's a completely personal thing a couple of things if you're going to use them as toilet paper you will also need a wet bag that you keep in your bathroom so once you or your family uses them they can be popped into the wet bag until wash day just like with cloth pads you want to leave that wet bag ajar open you do not want to seal it in because you don't want anything staying damp or moist if you have a family and you want to use cloth, then you can make everyone their own set. If you've got kids you're trying to get to use cloth, then you can use a cotton side like this one and choose their favorite TV characters or favorite color, favorite animals, whatever, so that they know that's their set and they can use it. So that's just a tip for you know, family cloth, if you like, where everyone's using it. 
Another thing you might want to consider is the colour of your cloth. You may not be bothered at all, but for some people, they don't want to see what is on the cloth. So they go for dark colours, purples, blacks, dark blues, anything like that. So how do we make it? It is so simple. I mean, I have bought some over the time that I've been using cloth. These two are actually purchased ones because I thought they came this little basket. They were just adorable. They really were. But all the rest of mine I have actually made. It is simple, simple, simple. So a really good size for toilet ones are seven by seven, but you want to draw your pattern seven and a half by seven and a half so you've got your seam allowance. So all you need to do is take a ruler and your paper for your template mark seven and a half seven and a half draw yourself a square leave a tab which is going to be where your turning hole is so you get a nice neat square and cut it out then that is basically your template you can make all different sizes of these depending on what you want if you want small hand wipes to take out for the kids you can make them smaller um, if you want them for blowing your nose you're probably going to want them a bit smaller. So again, you can completely customise and try out all different sizes until you find what's right for you. So that's your template. Fabric wise, for toilet um, tissue and toilet wipes, flannel is brilliant because it's thin but also sturdy enough and very, very soft. So you can upcycle that flannel from at home if you have flannel uh, bedding you're not using anymore, flannel pillowcases. Flannel is very cheap. So if you do need to buy new, then even the patterned flannel you can get for great prices. You can make literally all your family cloth from flannel and not spend more than a tenner. So it is really one of those handy fabrics for this sort of thing. Um, like I said a minute ago, you can have just a plain two-piece flannel wipe like that. Or you can have a patterned flannel and a normal flannel or a cotton side and a flannel side. But you only need two pieces. You don't need to do layers when it comes to cloth wipes or tissues. Um, whatever the use of your wipe or if they're for blowing your nose, etc. Two layers will be sufficient um, so you take your template and you cut out two pieces of your template basically if they are just standard plain flannel then lay them one on top of the other if you have got a pattern side that you want to be on the top then you want to put right sides together so this bit would be facing in and the black side would just be the other side of that so right sides together, similar as if you're making a turned and top stitch cloth pad. So once they're together, you can pin them, clip them, the choice is yours. Then you take them over to your sewing machine and you basically sew along inside about a quarter of an inch of your pattern, being sure to finish the stitches here and here and leaving a gap. Then you want to turn the fabric through this hole so that they're right sides out and you can see your top and bottom now and poke them with a um, like a pokey tool so I can't think of the correct word but I use a plastic knitting needle or you can get a chopstick anything like that so all the corners are nice and neatly out iron it flat and then take it over to your sewing machine pop these tabs inside so you've now got a nice straight edge and literally sew a square all the way round so it's top stitched which is if you've not come to this from cloth pads top stitching that's not a very good one to show you top stitching is basically this line here around the edge like so and then you have got yourself cloth wipes awesome super simple can use them for anything you're good to go now, some variations on these is if you want to do um, rags for your, I shouldn't call them rags, I don't like the sound of rags, they're too pretty to be rags. But you know what I mean, those um, blue throwaway rags 
that you buy from the supermarket that you use in your kitchen and then you chuck them away after a couple of uses. Um, things like that. If you want to replace those dishcloths and things that are, you would normally throw away once they get a bit mucky, then you can make those. You again can make these as plain or as vibrant as you like. This one I used a small piece of jersey that I got in a D stash to put on this side and on the other side is bamboo terry. Now any kind of terry is brilliant for your cleaning cloths. It doesn't matter if they are um, kitchen cloths, bathroom cloths, awesome stuff. It is very cheap to buy if you want to buy a basic white terry online but you can also upcycle old bath towels, old tea towels, um, things like that from around the home as well. Um, the reason that we're using a terry toweling type thing as opposed to flannel again here for our cleaning cloths is because we want them to be able to hold some water whether it be for drying things or wiping surfaces down, we need them to be able to keep that, to keep some moisture in there to allow us to clean. So Terry is great for that. You can also use microfiber if you've got some of that laying around the house or you want to purchase some of that. That again is great for the other side. And microfiber is great if you want to make some dusters. So if you want to, um, have polishing cloths for mirrors or just generally dusting your house, then microfiber is great as it attracts the dust and holds onto it. So that is what this is, basically a surface cleaner that you can use. You can make different colored ones for your bathroom, kitchen. You can really personalize them however you want. Again, size, you just need to make your square template. You can pick whatever size you want. Then we come to our mystical unpaper kitchen towel. Now this one I wanted to show you because I know it looks a bit rough around the edges now, but this is old. This is the first one I ever made actually. So this has been through the wash and through the wash and you can see that it's really like held up well. And I've chosen a cotton pattern. In fact, I think it's the one where I wasn't this is when I first started sewing, so the sewing isn't that good. But yeah, you can see they last. Even if you can't sew good, don't worry. They will still do the job and last. Now with the unpaper towel for your kitchen towel, it obviously wants to be bigger than all the others. If you don't know what size to go for, then grab the kitchen towel you're currently using and measure a piece of it and go with that. Again, remember to add on your seam allowance. Now you can have anything you like for this side you might choose to use a cotton a pretty one like I've done you might choose a flannel you might just want to go completely basic and have terry on terry which you can do again completely your choice but I've chosen cotton and on this side is bamboo terry so really nice and absorbent basically now simply you make it in exactly the same way as we made the others. But what people often want now is them to have that rolled look so they can put it on their kitchen towel holder. Now, it's really, really simple to achieve. If you have already got cam snaps at home because you're already making cloth pads, then you are good to go. Um, if you don't, you will need some kind of snap. You, I would advise against using metal ones because obviously these are going to be in wet a lot and you're going to be washing them a lot. So plastic cam snaps are um, very good for this. Uh, Velcro, you can use Velcro, but be aware the more you wash it and if you're washing it, washing it with cloth, it's going to get bits of the cloth on. So it's not going to last as good. So the most ideal thing and the thing you'll see shops use is cam snaps. So you make all your pads, simple pads, what am I saying? Um, all your wipes as so. So you've got your paper towels, unpaper towels, I should say. Gosh, I'm really losing it. It is still mega hot here. I can't tell you how hot I am. I'm so glad you can't see me right now, to be frank. Um, and all you do is apply your camp snaps, top and bottom, one of each. Um, 
with the receptive part on the other side then on your next one you put it so that they will snap so you need to match your snaps this is important because if they don't match they're not going to snap together so then you can snap those two together and you will have a row of two then on the next one you again put your cam snaps on snap it to it until you've got a line of them that snap together then all you do if you've got a patterned one for example is turn them over roll then you'll have your cam snaps here you'll snap the next one on and continue rolling and then snap the next one on continue rolling until you have as many as you want on that roll and then you can put it on your kitchen towel holder now you don't have to do the cam snap thing I actually roll them like this as I have all different pretty um, pattern ones and I keep them in a basket lined up like that I mean how pretty does that look is it just me or does that look really pretty I don't know I think it looks cute but anyway in a basket where they're all rolled next to each other like this they are just super duper cute then once you've used it whether it be to mop up a spill dry down a surface then you can just throw them in the wash and you're done you're good to go you have got rid of a load of throwaway products that were going to end up in landfill from your home and you've been able to customize them all the size you want the shape you want the patterns you want the colors you want it's like really you know personalizing your home and bringing a bit of your personality to products that normally would be bleached white tissue and match everybody else's so they're really simple to make i hope this video has inspired you to maybe give some of these things a go um obviously i spoke through how to make them in this video as they are really quite simple to make but if you would like a tutorial then please do comment down below and if enough people would like to see an actual tutorial on how to make them then I will put one of those together so that's it from me if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe or say hello in the comments I love reading everybody's comments um, and I'll speak to you soon